we just did some exploration of, of visual rhetoric, and now let's, let's continue on to have some framework. Uh, and so as we go forward, when we go to a place or, or read an article or whatever, I want you guys to bring that, that same sort of approach that you brought to those paintings and things. Same thing, right? If we're looking at a landscape, what's going on here? If we're looking at a, a piece of uh, multimedia, what's going on here, right? What, 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 what are the, what's, tr what's actively trying to be communicated to me? What's the impression given? What's the argument, et cetera? And so um, now I want to get into starting to talk about how, uh, how we have more broadly thought about the coast. And the first thing we're going to do is a little activity here. So, um, uh, this is, so you guys can click this. It's going to take you to a spreadsheet. I want you, we're just going to start on tab one, the first tab for now. Uh, so, um, but while you guys do that, have a look up here. Let me explain what we're going to do. Let me explain what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to take a few minutes here. And uh, everybody, uh, like before, you guys have uh, your name there. And so just scroll down until you find your name. And there's some term. Let's figure out what, uh, 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 what comes up when we do a search for this term. Now, here's everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Right? So I do not want you using your default whatever, your default um, search engine. Right? That's because we're all ESRM majors, and we're all interested in this stuff and you've been looking for news articles for our uh, scoop it and everything and so so already the the search engine has profiled you right google or whoever's profiled you i don't want that so for this exercise you have to use some anonymous browser so the easiest one if you guys are on your ipad or something you don't want to install something you just use DuckDuckGo. you could also use tor you could use anything that's going to anonymize your identity so that the search engine isn't going to associate the results with your p individual personal search history, okay? So I don't care how you do that, but, but, but uh, just don't use your default uh, settings, generic, just plug it in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down, find my name, and then here is, oops, here is a term, right? So I'm gonna type that term into my search engine, hit search. They're gonna get something. I want, and if you have a look, I want for each term, so we each have two terms, uh, two text-based, you know, primarily text-based outputs from the search engine and two uh, primarily image-based uh, uh, outputs, okay? I'm gonna copy that, whatever the answer is, I'm gonna copy that, paste it in here, and then I'm gonna say, Excellent, excellent. And then so, so this, this might need to be fixed. These things might need to be fixed, right? So, so for each line, it should say, you need to give me some, and you don't have to read the whole entire page, but you need to skim it or, or stare at the, the image or whatever you get. And then you're gonna tell me if it's, if it's overall, if the net feel from this or the net impression you know, given is positive slash interesting, if it's, boring and neutral and there's there's no good nor bad or if it's negative or super boring okay so so one of these things has to be a yes and you can just do a pull down menu there and then three quick words to describe what the page is or the image is and then you can add a comment if you want okay so the question here is when we search for these terms related to the coast let's see on average are they positive things are they negative things? What? Does that make sense what we're doing? Yeah. Ready, set, go. We need to uh, uh, finish this because the, the numbers are spurious right now, but, but it still looks like you know, the largest category was positive. Is that what you guys found? Yes. Okay, good. So, so the, the most frequently associated impression, visual, written, is generally positive when we search for these terms about um, about the coast or related to the coast. So cool, so thanks for that. What I wanna talk about next is how the rhetoric about coast and coastal and marine issues have changed over uh, modern times, right? So we're talking about modern era, so from about 1850 uh, onward. And so we start with, so in, in um, while we're gonna go back to 1850, um, but I wanna gonna start right here with, um, the even more recent than that, 
the what we call what we will call for the purpose of our class the coastal imaginary, right? So this is re this is um, uh, supposedly memories of the way things used to have, used to be, but but it's really also more aspirational. It's like the invented. It's like those last few paintings we looked at that they were kind of magical and and dreamlike and idealized. Depend it depends on who's doing the idealizing, but nevertheless, it's still this sort of you know, through a gauzy lens looking back uh, uh, at, at the time. And so this is, this is typified um, here in Southern California by, in the 1960s, the, the beach movies, right? Where everybody's all white and everybody's all rich and everybody just has the day to just hang out on the beach and surf and there's no stress and, and that kind of idealized lifestyle of, of supposedly the beach, right? Our area particularly our part of the coast, has been used as the imaginary cauldron for much of the world for almost a century now. So this is a picture right here of a film uh, hap uh, being filmed in 1937 at Point Magoo. Uh, you'll notice there's a fishing pier here uh, that used to exist. Um, and our coast was being transformed into all these imaginary places around the world. It's still the place where even today, much of um, when, we, when we think about um, uh, a lot of our, our coastline now, it's in this sort of dreamlike state. Like it's, it's the, uh, the crazy rock and roll musician that makes a gazillion million dollars. They go buy a, a property in, in Malibu or something like that, right? And that's where Tony Stark makes his crazy inventions and all that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's this sort of dreamland. So there's one perspective of the coast that's the imaginary. Sometimes we think of that in a negative light, but it's also very, very powerful, right? And, and so imagining not just, um, maybe not just reimagining what's the way things were, but imagining how things could be, right? So that's the imaginary. The imaginary, the, the historic imaginary, though, is oftentimes um, not real. It is, it is sort of an invented one. Now, so that, that, that was sort of back in the day. More recently, the common imagery that's been coming uh, or that our society associates with the coast is increasingly what we'll call a dystopiary, increasingly scary, increasingly weird, increasingly out of balance. And so here are just a few examples. Here's doing COVID, right? With with a lot of the imagery was about masks and waste and, and things like that, that, that uh, a COVID waste that would wash up on our shores. This 2018 photo of these llamas at the beach is at Zuma during the Woolsey fire where people took their wildlife that they had on their ranches in Malibu and the fires were coming from, so they just ran to the beach. So we had all these giant, you know, animals that aren't supposed to be tied up to a lifeguard stand or tied up to a lifeguard stand. And that orangeness is how it looked, right? Because of the, the smoke and the fire. This is the Refugio oil spill 2015. This is uh, Wainimi Beach. Not supposed to have oil piled up on our beaches. Uh, tar balls piled up on our beaches. Um, I showed you this the other day, but this is a, a modeling effort as to what sea level rise is gonna do to essentially Miami in the areas around Miami Beach. This was during the Thomas fire, where surfers were walking out to surf wearing uh, N95 respirators, right? All these images are not, are not that, you know, this is the idealized version of the coast, supposedly, right? This is the increasingly common stuff. This is the era that we're in right now, right? Or, or in or just, or just transitioning from this dystopiary. So imaginary, dystopiary, and this new thing we appear to be moving into. And it's, it's completely arguable wh whether we're in there yet or we're not quite in there yet or whatever. But the next level, things are perfect. Oh my God, things are horrible. This other level, which is, hey, things can be better. That we acknowledge the imaginary, we acknowledge the dystopiary, but maybe we can do things differently. And I think the best example of this is um, Bruce's Beach down in Manhattan Beach. Uh, there's all kinds of examples we can talk about, but I think this is the clearest example. So um, the short version here is this, let me actually turn the lights down so you can see it a little bit better. 
So this story uh, uh, really gets going in the 1920s, in the 1920s where um, uh, African Americans are excluded from most uh, of our societal um, institutions, right? Um, and uh, in this case, we're talking about the beach. And so a lot of people uh, were not allowed to just go to the beach when they would want to go to the beach. Even though the LA's population was much lower, many fewer people, many much more coastline per, per much, much larger chunks of the coast per person were available, but still we had um, uh, racism and all that stuff. So one family decides, hey, enough of this. I'm going to go somewhere where there currently isn't anybody or very few people. And so that, at the time, was Manhattan Beach in sort of the southern part of, of the Santa Monica Bay. And we, the area we now call the Beach Cities area, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, those areas. Um, and so they go in and they plop down and they basically uh, say, hey, this is cool. And they, they you know, buy some area. And, um, they initially start as a little vacation thing where you can come out for the weekend or, you know, plop down, have a, have a coffee, have a beer, get an umbrella, and just sort of chill with your kids, right? So that, that goes quite well and it becomes, uh, begins to become well known. And then they start to say, hey, maybe we could do a little small development kind of thing here. We're not just vacation, uh, you know, um, not, just a vac not just a come to the beach for the weekend kind of spot, but maybe something you can have a little bit more of. So as that progress, and I'm, I'm, I'm jumping through a, a very long history here, but, but uh, that goes on for a little while. And then now the white developers realize, oh, hey, there's, some, there's something going on here, right? And again, this is, this is a relatively intact, well-functioning coastal strand, which means a lot of dunes. So there's a lot of nooks and crannies. And so in this part of Santa Monica Bay, there's, there are fairly tall sand dunes on the order of many, many stories high type of sand dunes, right? So it's not just looking over a flat plain. You can kind of, you know, get in a nook and a cranny and kind of hide from view from, from uh, uh, up the coast or down the coast or just inland or whatever. Well, as, as you would suspect, uh, you know, the people with money and power start to figure this out. They're like, no, we're going to take that. So they use eminent domain, which is a tool that we have uh, primary, it's supposed to be used for public good. So if we absolutely have to, if we're fighting a war and we need a runway here and your house in the way of the runway, we're going to take your house, right? That's the idea of eminent domain. But because property is one of the few things uh, uh, stipulated explicitly in the Constitution, theoretically the government can't take your property. They actually can through this mechanism called eminent domain. But what they can do, but they have to give you fair market value. And so um, they don't for this family. So, they, so they, they take the property and they say, oh, we need this for, initially they say we need it for a light rail, uh, a, a, you know, a, um, a, a, a public transportation corridor thing. And then it very quickly is uh, not that. Um, so, so, it's, so now it's taken up and uh, the family has been disenfranchised. So most of the family gave up and said, whatever, this is classic racist tactics, you know, blah, blah, blah. But a portion of the family didn't give it up. And they kept fighting, and they kept fighting, and they kept fighting. On into the 1970s and the 1980s and the 1990s, they start to more actively lobby the city of Manhattan Beach. Now, most of the city of Manhattan Beach looks like this, right? It's, it's completely urbanized. In, you know, it's all gazillion million dollar houses and concrete up to the shoreline and all this and that. There's one chunk, though, that is not. And that chunk is, uh, which is where the, uh, this picture is taken. And so, so we're standing on Highland. Wait, is it Highland? Not Highland. Uh, whatever, I can't remember. No, it is Highland. Yeah, I think it is Highland. And looking towards the ocean. This is the only significant chunk of land that goes from the main, you know, uh, uh, across the shore road um, uh, down to the water. It's a, it's a rolling uh, grassland, a rolling uh, hillside, um, that's a park, that's a public park. So you can take your dogs out there, you can go do your yoga there, whatever. And then at the bottom of that is a lifeguard station. And our lifeguards in LA County, we call them Baywatch, and that's a Baywatch station. So that's a regional uh, headquarters for, you know, people making sure everybody's, nobody's gonna drown in, in that part of uh, Santa Monica Bay. 
And because it was a park, it stayed a park, et cetera. So this is now one of the, this is one of the parcels that the Bruce family owned. So in the 90s, the family started arguing and arguing, arguing, arguing that, you know, hey, you know, this land was taken unfairly, et cetera, uh, to the city council. And starting in the, in the 2000s, the city council first puts up this, this is, this is a, a, a revised monument, but, but they first put up this monument right here, which is, which is a, a stone thing with a little placard that was essentially a historical marker. This used to be the Bruce family's property, da da da. da. And then uh, over the course of the next 20 years, that historical marker becomes a little bit more, and, and it, it's, 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 again, it's a long story. But um, we transitioned from that to the city council saying, well, let's actually interpret this history as opposed to just saying this is where these folks lived. Um, and eventually, um, uh, so, so, so this parcel is actually, well, was owned, well, no, it is again. So, so when, this, when this picture was taken on the left, this was owned by the county of Los Angeles, right? So it's a city, it's a city facility and, and the land is actually owned by the county and it is, it is um, operated as a public space, right? And so that's why there aren't houses here. Everywhere else, houses, 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 restaurant, 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 gas station, gas station, gas station. So um, uh, essentially, um, people say, why have we taken this parcel from these folks for um, something that we said we we're gonna use it for that we didn't use it for and it's actually possible to give this back, right? If this was somebody's house, it, almost impossible, right? Like, I'm gonna force you to give your house up, I guess not gonna happen. But because it's public land, it offered another possible pathway. And so that pathway uh, led to meetings of the city council, all kinds of uh, rallies and this and that. And ultimately, the county of LA petition, uh, 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 the, the um, the county supervisors agreeing to um, essentially give this land back to the Bruce family. It required a state law to be passed in Sacramento and all kinds of legal institutions, but suffice it to say, uh, that land was given back to the Bruce family. And then they immediately turned around and leased it back to the county. So they're not, not putting up a mansion here, they're not, they're not changing the land use, but now instead of the rents going to the county, the rents are going to the family, right? And so, uh, you know, reparations and things like that, are, it's, a, it's a challenging topic, it's hard to do, it just can't always work, but this is an example of trying to build a more inclusive coastal zone, right? And making sure that everybody's welcome. Since this started to happen, we've seen a much higher percentage of African Americans go to Manhattan Beach to recreate, hang out on Saturday, Right now, there's a, in this park, there's a huge Juneteenth celebration, for example, where there, nothing like that ever used to happen in Manhattan Beach, right? So this idea of, of having a more inclusive coastal zone, we're on the cusp of this, right? We're starting in fits and starts. Sometimes that's ecologically inclusive. Sometimes that, that's different uh, groups in our society inclusive. But we're making progress towards this inclusionary um, and, and, you know, we're, we're, uh, yeah, so I'll say that, that we're in this, we're in this transition time between dystopiary and inclusionary. Um, during COVID-19, um, when we would talk about certain things, most of the time when we would talk about COVID-19 in the U S 90% of the news articles were bad. 90% of the talking about of COVID was COVID's horrible, people are dying, you know, wah, da, 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 da. The rest of the world, in, in their mass media, it was negative only about 50-ish percent of the time. And so, so and, and because as I mentioned, a lot of the COVID stuff also seemed to talk about the coast, there was this running to talk about the negative side of, of, of COVID-19, and by, by extension, uh, negative side of um, the coast. And so again, a lot of the rhetoric during COVID-19 about the coast was, uh, or a lot of the rhetoric used the coast as the way to interpret um, COVID-19, the good and the bad. As we go forward, we have to have a objectivity. 
these lenses, the, this in, inclusionary, imaginary, dystopiary, these things, they're, they're important. We need to recognize those. We need to recognize that these, this is often the, the fault um, way we're communicating and look at these things objectively. So when we're talking about the erosion of, of you know, shorelines, we need um, inclusion. We talk about how we fragment these systems, like right here at the Mexico border between the U.S. and Mexico. Um, uh, right, this picture is taken from Tijuana, looking into um, uh, the U.S. Right, we need to really approach these things, and it's very easy to get sucked into dystopiary. It's very easy to suck get sucked into the world's ending. Right, the cliffs are crumbling. We're all jerks to one another. We can't get along. Right. But um, acknowledge that, right? And, and there, there's reason to be worried, right? This is a new, we haven't been able to restore some of our marsh for decades in Louisiana, but magically two years ago, all of a sudden we're filling in the marsh. And I was like, oh great, we're working on restoration. No, we're building a, an LNG terminal, right? So, so there's reasons to be worried. Dystopiary is real, but we don't have to be stuck in dystopiary as we go through this class looking at options and things. So this is what I'm going to give you guys um, for our next assignment and also as a way to help us understand as we look at management situations throughout time. Um, there's one more which I didn't talk about because it's not super relevant to a lot of the stuff we'll talk about, but when we, when we read old stuff, you might come across it. So I told you about the imaginary, dystopiary, and inclusionary. And I'm talking about the imaginary is basically um, much of the 20th century, right? So, so World War I onward. The dystopiary really is since about the 70s. Um, and the inclusionary really gets going, I would argue, around 2018 um, as, as, a, as a new way to formally interact with our coastal zone. But, but these dates are not hard. These, these, these are fluid dates. The one I haven't mentioned is this phobiary or, of, or fear of and that was really pre-1900s. You know, the ocean is scary. People didn't necessarily, um, especially in urban centers, didn't necessarily know how to swim. And you know, a lot of times sailors on, on British naval vessels, they didn't know how to swim. And so, so, um, so that phobiary is real, but that's not super relevant to most of what we're gonna talk about um, uh, in most of our class. So we really have the imaginary, the dystopiary, and the inclusionary. And that's going to that's gonna provide the overall setting for a lot of our conversations this semester. Does that make sense? Questions about that? Okay, cool. Um, so the next step we're going to do, I'm going I'm to get you guys going and we're going to run out of time, so I'm just going to get you going. The next step is to go back to that data sheet that we were just using. Is on our tab number two. Yeah, I guess I did. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this calisphere.org um, uh, repository of historic uh, materials. And essentially, um, you're, going to, you're going to search. Where am I? You're going to search inside there. Uh, for some different, uh, so a search term that's in, that's in the list next to your, next to your uh, name. And then you can search any of these options. So uh, citrus labels, postcards, magazines or photos are the image rich galleries, right? There are others, but these are the ones that are probably the easiest for you guys to find. So I'm gonna search postcards and the sea or whatever, right? I'm gonna find. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say what I searched for. I looked. I looked in in this thing. The and then the, you're gonna find a bunch. And so noodle around and find ones that seem interesting to you. I'm gonna say the year that it was, and then paste a link to it in case I want to check it out. Um, a little quick impression, meaning like half a sentence, like like a, a blurb. A comment if you want. If there's something funky about it, but just a brief impression, a few few words, and then you're gonna. So if it's if it's from you know, not, I'm gonna say yes. This was part of the imaginary. Or this was an example of the phobiary or whatever. Does that make sense? And so just like before, we're going we're gonna to check out to see um, overall if, uh, uh, you know, how common are these uh, ways of articulating the coastal zone and the beach or the coastal zone and the sea or, or whatever it is. Does that make sense? 
So I can come up here and I can say, uh, you know, C. And when I type that in, right, I say I want, I want to do images. So, so yeah, okay, so, so I typed in, I typed in my, my word, and then I'm like, I want to look in here, and I want to look, I want to look, um, uh, I, can, so I can look in like, let's say the, I don't know, 1900s, right? And I can look in uh, maps, I don't want to look at maps, I can look at uh, historical stuff, um, I can look in photo collections, photographs, um, I can look in postcards, there's somewhere in here. So yeah, so, so, so you, you don't have to use one particular, yeah, those, those are just some examples of things you guys could use that, because sometimes people get overwhelmed by all the choices. So I didn't want you guys to spend hours and hours poking different things, I just wanted you to pick a couple things. And then when I get through there, so let's say this is, this is my thing, right? I don't know this one, let's say this is the guy I want. So if I, um, should I can look at it, right? It should be able, should be able to look at it. So in this case, this is the low resolution one, but some other ones will be big, and I can look at it, and I can say, okay, I can copy this link now, paste it in there, and I can say whether this seems to be, um, you know, imaginary or or dystopiary or whatever. Does that make sense?